In this video we're going to have a look at how we can use Python and TK Inter to produce a graphical user interface that allows for the converting of temperatures in Fahrenheit to temperatures in Celsius. Let's consider this specification. Produce a graphical user interface that allows a user to enter temperature in Fahrenheit and have it display the temperature in Celsius on the click of a button. Another word for Celsius is obviously centigrade. The first thing to do is to plan the layout for the graphical user interface and I'm showing it here and you can see that I've got three label widgets, an entry widget and a button widget and if we look at the position of each of these widgets we can see that this label widget is in row 0, column 0, this one is in row 1, column 0, the button widget is in row 2, column 0, the entry widget is in row 0, column 1, and the label widget is in row 1, column 1. And here we have no widget, so there's no widget in that position. The next step is to think what I would like the various widgets to display. And if we have a look, I've made this decision. Into this label, I'm going to put the string enter Fahrenheit. That's a user-friendly message that will inform the user that I wish them to enter Fahrenheit here in the entry widget. Here it says Celsius temperature, and I'm going to arrange for the Celsius temperature to appear here. And if we look at this button, you can see I've called that convert. I've set its text property, its text attribute to convert. At this point, I now decide what I'm going to call the widgets as they appear in code. So, for example, I'm going to refer to this label as friendly underscore label underscore one, simply because it's a user-friendly label to give the user of the graphical user interface some hint as to what they should be doing. If I look at the next label, I'm simply going to call that friendly underscore label underscore two. If we look to the button, I'm going to call that convert underscore button. If I come up to the entry box, I'm going to refer to that as Fahrenheit underscore entry. And if I look at the last label, I'm going to call that display underscore Celsius underscore label. So these names that I'm showing you here are the names that are going to appear in the program code when I build the graphical user interface, as you will see in a moment. As a programmer, I'm now concerned with the events associated with this graphical user interface. For this graphical user interface, I conclude that the only event I will have is the event of clicking onto the button. Here I'm going to represent the code that will fire when we click on the button as shown here. You can see the dotted line representing the event and the code to execute is going to be a function. I now give consideration to the algorithm of the function and I'm going to show that with the following simple steps. Step 1, get Fahrenheit. Now that means we're going to be getting the Fahrenheit from this entry widget here. Then we will perform the conversion. Then we will display the Celsius from the conversion process in this position. The next step is to build the graphical user interface to implement what we've just designed a moment ago. And I'm showing that with this code here. We have the usual three lines we expect when we're dealing with Python and TK Inter. Here we have five lines of code which are going to create the instances of all of the widgets that we need. If we look at this one for example, we can see we're creating the instance of a label. And this label is going to be associated with this window and we're setting the text property of the label to enter Fahrenheit and we can see the name of the label is given here and it's precisely the name that I give it during the design process. This line also creates a label and we can see here that the text option has been set to Celsius temperature. Another label is created on this line and if you look you can see that there is no text option set. This means that the label will be empty and the reason it's empty is it's waiting to receive the output from the program. This line is responsible for producing an instance of the entry widget. Here an instance of a button widget is created and we can see that the text option, the named argument is set to convert. So the button will appear on the form labeled as convert. 
These five lines of the program are now responsible for positioning the created widgets on the window and we can see that in all cases the grid method was used. If we consider this program statement as an example we can see that the grid method is positioning this label at row 0, column 0. Let's have a look at another example. This line we can see is positioning using the grid method this button at row 2, column 0. I'll let you consider these three program statements but again you can clearly see they're using the grid method and in the brackets of the grid method you can see we are setting the row and the column as appropriate. When we execute this program the graphical user interface we can expect to see is as shown here. If we consider this label we can see it is displaying enter Fahrenheit. Now that has come about because if we look on this line where we created the label we can see that we set the text property to enter Fahrenheit. If we consider the position of this label we can see it is in row zero, column zero. Now the reason it's there is because of this line and you can see we set it to row 0, column 0. Now there is a label in this position, we can't see it because the background colour of the label is the same as that of the form. So if we come to the code we can see that the label was created here and this positioned the label at row 1, column 1. And if you look to the label you can see it is in row 1 and column 1. I will leave it to you to inspect the remaining widgets and how they relate to the code that appeared in the program. Let's now turn our attention to how we perform the conversion of Fahrenheit to Celsius and we need to consider an appropriate formula to do this. Given the temperature in Fahrenheit, from the Fahrenheit temperature, you subtract 32, then multiply by 5, then divide by 9, and this will give you the temperature in Celsius. The formula for this is shown here, where this is Celsius, this is Fahrenheit, here you can see the subtraction of 32, here we can see we're multiplying by 5, and here we're dividing by 9. Now this formula is as it would look in Python. Whenever you write a program you usually produce a test plan and that test plan is to prove that the program is working correctly. Now a couple of tests that you might see in a test plan for the program that's going to convert from Fahrenheit to Celsius are shown here. We'll look at this one first. When Fahrenheit is 32 degrees Celsius is 0 degrees. In other words the temperature in Fahrenheit of 32 is equivalent to 0 in Celsius. Now if we have a look at the formula if I put 32 here then of course this subtraction is going to give you 0 in the brackets. We then multiply that 0 by 5 which gives 0 and then we divide that 0 by 9 which gives 0. Let's now consider this example when Fahrenheit is 212 degrees Celsius is 100 degrees. So let's put 212 here and 212 minus 32 is 180. We then take that 180 and multiply it by 5 to give us 900 and then we divide by 9 which gives us 100. I've taken the understanding of the formula that converts from Fahrenheit to Celsius to this program here which is an amendment of the program we've been considering in this video. Let's have a look at the amendments. Well the first thing we can see I have a function here that I've called convert and here you can see the formula we've just been discussing and this is the formula that's going to do the conversion. This line, well this is going to receive input from the graphical user interface from the entry widget and I'll come back and describe what that is like in a moment and this will display the answer that's produced on this line. Now we want this function to execute when the user of the graphical user interface requests the conversion to take place and of course this is achieved by clicking on the button. So we need to ensure that this function is associated with this button and if we can look at the options within here we can see we've got this additional option where we make command equal to convert and obviously convert is the name of this function as you can see here. 
Consequently, this line now associates this button with this function. So when the user clicks on this button in the graphical user interface, this function will execute. Let's consider a typical runtime for this computer program. Here we can see the graphical user interface. Now the user of this will enter into this entry box an appropriate temperature to be converted. And let's use the example we've already looked at, that of 32 degrees. Then the user will click onto this button. The moment they click onto that button, because if we look at this line, we can see that this option has linked the button to this function. This function is now going to execute. And if we look here, we can see that Fahrenheit underscore entry, which is the name of this entry box, is having a message passed to it where this is the message and the message will invoke this get method and this get method will get the 32 as a string that's the key here it comes in as a string so here in this position we've got a string 32 now we have to convert that to a number and the number I've chosen to convert it to is a float so F which is the variable that is going to store the temperature in Fahrenheit is going to store 32.0 because that's what will happen when you convert it to a float. The point will appear, so it will be 32.0. Now, here we've got 32 and we're going to subtract 32, multiply it by 5 and divide it by 9. Now, we've already seen that this gives 0. Now, that 0 is going to be assigned to C and it will be a float within C. So what we have to do now, we have to transfer the value of the C to this position here. And to achieve that, I first of all, as you can see here, need to convert the C to a string. And this string is then assigned to the text attribute of this widget. And this widget is the widget here. So what we can expect to see here is 0.0, .0 as you can see appearing here. Let's consider the runtime where the user enters a temperature of 212 degrees Fahrenheit, where we expect the result to be 100. So I'll come to here and I'll enter 212 and then click onto the convert button and you can see indeed we do get 100.0 as the output. When building a program that uses a graphical user interface, I recommend the following steps and I followed these steps for the program seen in this video. Step one, build the graphical user interface. Step two, arrange for user input to be transferred from the graphical user interface to a program variable. Step three, process the data that resides in the variable. Step four, store the results of the processing in a variable. Step five, transfer the result from the variable to the graphical user interface. We saw what was involved in implementing step one, build the graphical user interface earlier in the video. I'm now going to concentrate on steps two through to five, and I'm going to do this by looking at this function here. This line implemented step two, i.e. arranging for user input to be transferred from the graphical user interface to a program variable. This got the data from the graphical user interface. This is a message to the entry widget. We converted it to a float and then we assigned it to F, which is the example of a program variable. This line of the code is responsible for implementing steps three and four. This bit of the line is actually the processing. This is where we used F, subtracted 32 from it, multiplied it by five and divided it by nines. F was used as part of the process. Then if you look, we assigned the result of this process to C. We store the results of the processing in the variable, where in this case, the variable was C. Finally, this line of the program was responsible for step 5, which is transfer the result from the variable to the graphical user interface. The result is stored here. We first of all have to convert it to a string and then we assign it to the text attribute of this label which is on the graphical user interface. So we take the content of the variable from here and we transfer it to the graphical user interface using this assign. 
If you have been following the series of videos in this playlist on using TK Inter with Python, you'll be aware there are a number of ways of getting information from the graphical user interface to program variables and then transferring the results from program variables to the graphical user interface. This was responsible for getting the information from the entry widget. In the next video, I'll be looking at other ways to achieve this. Here, you can see that we transferred from a variable to the text attribute of a label. In the next video, I'll be looking at other ways in which you can do this. And in both cases, they're going to involve the use of string var. Check out the supporting website for these videos. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video?